Professor, I understand that you were looking to speak with me. Perhaps you would like some insight on how to write your next lecture? While I do have a great many ideas, it would be inappropriate to... Oh, am I mistaken? If that's the case, then what can I do for you? The ladies have complained? To you? About me? <laughs> Preposterous! <laughs> there must be some mistake. I am the heir of the noble house Gloucester. It is bred in me to treat all people with respect. Rest assured, you will not find anyone more upstanding than yours truly. Perhaps the issue is that the splendor of my noble presence is driving the ladies to distraction. If that is the crime, I do confess. I hope I've not troubled the ladies' hearts unduly. Outrageous! That's absurd! Who would dare to allege such slander? Of all the... <laughs> well, I suppose I have offered several of them the honor of dining with me. It is impossible to tell if even the most well-bred young lady is a suitable companion for me, merely by the sight of her. So, in order for us to get to know each other properly, it is appropriate that we dine together. Thus far, they have all declined, oddly enough. For some reason, they seem to be exercising some form of restraint when speaking with me. I would never insist, of course. But I will admit I have, on occasion, after a day's pause, issued repeat invitations, in the fashion and style of a gentleman. What? Ridiculous! Dinner invitations for me? A problem? The very idea. I am a perfect gentleman, the son of a noble line. I'm a wit like a rapier, and it takes but a glance to see that I'm gorgeous. No, I cannot believe such a thing. Are you sure this isn't the result of some sort of scheme? It cannot be otherwise. Someone has clearly devised a conspiracy against me. Someone who envies my position, who seeks to soil my sterling reputation with foul rumors. How crude. Please, Professor, it is beneath you to fall victim to such petty and obscene tactics. I implore you to take greater care in the future. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a great deal of work to do. Farewell. Professor, have you been looking for me again? I am very busy, you know. I must insist that disruptions for light-hearted chats of this kind be kept to a minimum. <laughs> what did I tell you about falling victim to such salacious and slanderous rumors? As I've told you, there is obviously a conspiracy against me. There is no manner in which I could possibly be considered bothersome. Professor, I assure you, you have been deceived. My adversary has poisoned the hearts of these ladies against me. The plot goes deeper than I thought. But... If you truly do insist... Please understand, Professor. I am not some scoundrel out for conquest. I am attempting to fulfill my duty as heir of House Gloucester. It is my responsibility to continue our noble line by finding a suitable lady to be my wife. It is a rigorous process. My family has the very highest standards for appearance, grace, temperament, and pedigree. Typically, yes, even if others are sometimes critical of that notion. For the nobility, marriage is not merely a union of individuals, it is also a union of families. It would not benefit House Gloucester to be tied to a family of powerless commoners, would it? To achieve supremacy, it is necessary for my line to be tied to that of an influential family. That is the best path to peace and prosperity for all of Fodlan. So as you can see, the fate of the whole world rests upon my shoulders. It is nothing out of the ordinary. Those of us with noble blood are born to this duty, you know. That being said, to avoid misunderstandings, I shall restrain myself until things calm down. I would rather not cause trouble for you, after all.
Well met, Professor. I trust that you have not had any complaints about me lately. Good. For any trouble I may have caused, please accept my most humble apology. I've decided that it would be inappropriate for me to continue my search for a spouse while we are at war. I expect that means you will not be receiving any more complaints. I hope that puts you more at ease. Actually, the introspection I've gained setting aside my search has motivated me to amend my conduct. <laughs> not the phrasing I choose, but you're not wrong. Selfishly pursuing my own desires caused me to behave inconsiderately. For instance, it was arrogant and rude to invite ladies to dine with me purely to evaluate them. Our experiences in battle have also given me cause to doubt certain preconceptions I once held. Previously, I had considered it a requirement for my future spouse to come from a noble line. I once thought that commoners lacked the power to influence the wider world, as history might suggest. To find a commoner who made a real impact, one has to look all the way back to Nemesis. That was my belief, at any rate. But I realized that I've actually had an influential commoner right in front of me all along. Don't you see? I'm referring to you. You may wield the power of a crest, but you are so much more than just that. You have managed to charm everyone around you, to compel them to trust and follow you. Though you may not realize it, that is no mean feat. It is altering the course of history in Fodlan. Your example puts my prior beliefs to shame. I appreciate the kind words. I have always sought to embody the ideal of nobility. That, at least, is a goal I continue to stand by. But now I know that bloodline alone is not sufficient to gauge a person's worth. I've learned much of this from you. You are humble and open-minded, despite your power and skill. That is why I, at least, find you so charismatic. Perhaps that is the wrong way to say it. What I mean is that you set an admirable example. I can only hope someday to be your equal. Of course, you had better keep an eye on me, because I can achieve anything I set out to do. For I am none other than the handsome and talented Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. <laughs> Professor, I understand that you are looking to speak with me. Perhaps you would like some insight on how to write your next lecture? While I do have a great many ideas, it would be inappropriate to... Oh, am I mistaken? If that's the case, then what can I do for you? The ladies have complained? To you? About me? <laughs> Preposterous! <laughs> there must be some mistake. I am the heir of the noble house Gloucester. It is bred in me to treat all people with respect. Rest assured, you will not find anyone more upstanding than yours truly. Perhaps the issue is that the splendor of my noble presence is driving the ladies to distraction. If that is the crime, I do confess. I hope I've not troubled the ladies' hearts unduly. Outrageous! That's absurd! Who would dare to allege such slander? Of all the... <laughs> well, I suppose I have offered several of them the honor of dining with me. It is impossible to tell if even the most well-bred young lady is a suitable companion for me, merely by the sight of her. So, in order for us to get to know each other properly, it is appropriate that we dine together. Thus far, they have all declined, oddly enough. For some reason, they seem to be exercising some form of restraint when speaking with me. I would never insist, of course. But I will admit I have, on occasion, after a day's pause, issued repeat invitations, in the fashion and style of a gentleman. What? Ridiculous! Dinner invitations from me? A problem? The very idea. I am a perfect gentleman, the son of a noble line. I have a wit like a rapier, and it takes but a glance to see that I'm gorgeous. No, I cannot believe such a thing. Are you sure this isn't the result of some sort of scheme? It cannot be otherwise. Someone has clearly devised a conspiracy against me. Someone who envies my position. 
who seeks to soil my sterling reputation with foul rumors. How crude. Please, Professor, it is beneath you to fall victim to such petty and obscene tactics. I implore you to take greater care in the future. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a great deal of work to do. Farewell. Professor, have you been looking for me again? I am very busy, you know. I must insist that disruptions for light-hearted chats of this kind be kept to a minimum. <sighs> what did I tell you about falling victim to such salacious and slanderous rumors? As I've told you, there is obviously a conspiracy against me. There is no manner in which I could possibly be considered bothersome. Professor, I assure you, you have been deceived. My adversary has poisoned the hearts of these ladies against me. The plot goes deeper than I thought. All right, let's not get carried away. Please understand, Professor. I am not some scoundrel out for conquest. I am attempting to fulfill my duty as heir of House Gloucester. It is my responsibility to continue our noble line by finding a suitable lady to be my wife. It is a rigorous process. My family has the very highest standards for appearance, grace, temperament, and pedigree. Typically, yes, even if others are sometimes critical of that notion. For the nobility, marriage is not merely a union of individuals. It is also a union of families. It would not benefit House Gloucester to be tied to a family of powerless commoners, would it? To achieve supremacy, it is necessary for my line to be tied to that of an influential family. That is the best path to peace and prosperity for all of Fodlan. So as you can see, the fate of the whole world rests upon my shoulders. If it is a burden, it is one I am all too familiar with. We nobles are born to this duty. That being said, to avoid misunderstandings, I shall restrain myself until things calm down. I would rather not cause trouble for you, after all. Well met, Professor. I trust that you have not had any complaints about me lately. Do you find it concerning that I've ceased making advances toward the ladies? I've decided that it would be inappropriate for me to continue my search for a spouse while we are at war. I expect that means you will not be receiving any more complaints. I hope that puts you more at ease. Actually, the introspection I've gained setting aside my search has motivated me to amend my conduct. <laughs> not the phrasing I choose, but you're not wrong. Selfishly pursuing my own desires caused me to behave inconsiderately. For instance, it was arrogant and rude to invite ladies to dine with me purely to evaluate them. Our experiences in battle have also given me cause to doubt certain preconceptions I once held. Previously, I had considered it a requirement for my future spouse to come from a noble line. I once thought that commoners lacked the power to influence the wider world, as history might suggest. To find a commoner who made a real impact, one has to look all the way back to Nemesis. That was my belief, at any rate. But I realized that I've actually had an influential commoner right in front of me all along. Don't you see? I'm referring to you. You may wield the power of a crest, but you are so much more than just that. You have managed to charm everyone around you, to compel them to trust and follow you. Though you may not realize it, that is no mean feat. It is altering the course of history in Fodlan. Your example puts my prior beliefs to shame. I appreciate the kind words. I have always sought to embody the ideal of nobility. That, at least, is a goal I continue to stand by. But now I know that bloodline alone is not sufficient to gauge a person's worth. I've learned much of this from you. You are humble and open-minded, despite your power and skill. That is why I, at least, find you so charismatic. Perhaps that is the wrong way to say it. What I mean is that you set an admirable example. 
I can only hope someday to be your equal. Of course, you had better keep an eye on me, because I can achieve anything I set out to do. For I am none other than the handsome and talented Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. <laughs> You actually came. I wasn't sure you'd find the time. You often asked me to meet with you, but this is the first time it has been the other way around. I know I gave you something of a headache. Please forgive my youthful impropriety. Now that the war is finally over, it seems I am able to resume my search for a suitable wife. Just one. Pedigree and status are no longer priorities for me. I now know that what matters most is the worth of an individual's soul. And there is only one person who calls to my heart. One whose incredible qualities outshine all others. That person is you. You'd expected this all along? I am I that predictable? I hope to surprise you. I cannot believe I've made such a terrible blunder. Even so, surely you have some reply beyond that. No, I should apologize. I've gone and made you flustered. How abominably rude. Please don't fret about it. I'm no longer the type of person to get upset over others' manners. Do you remember when I said you were charismatic? By that time... I had already become unable to imagine anyone but you as my partner. But I did not feel I was your equal. Since then, I have worked tirelessly to improve, to become a man truly worthy of you. What do you think? Have I finally managed it? I... I was. In that case, please hear my humble proposal. I want nothing more than to be yours, now and for all time. Will you do me this great honor? You will? You do? Yes, uh, of course this should happen. Not even if you scoured all Fodlin could you find a partner more worthy of you. Or my name isn't Lawrence Hellman Gloucester! <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I swear to do my utmost to make you happy, and together we will make this world a better place. You. Just what are you up to? Well, if it isn't Lawrence. Yes, it is. Try not to sound so affronted. And you're just whimsically wandering the monastery grounds again, I suppose? Oh, naturally. After all, I really do adore the Garrick Mock Monastery. No, I think not. That impish look on your face does not suggest innocence. You are up to something. Lawrence, control yourself. Let's not start throwing around baseless accusations. It's not proper. This monastery is packed with a thousand years of history. Well, five years shy of a thousand, if we're going for accuracy. Those pillars, these walls, even the floor, they've all seen more than we can possibly imagine. Our distant ancestors may have walked these very halls. Doesn't that excite you? Perhaps, if this were a discussion about art, but I'm afraid walls and floors are not sufficiently interesting to hold my attention. Nor will they suffice to distract me from what is plainly suspicious about you. House Regan was on the brink of collapse until they suddenly revealed you as their legitimate heir. That was only a year ago. Where were you before then? Are you even a true heir to House Regan? If I weren't truly of House Regan descent, how do you imagine I acquired my crest? A crest is insufficient. I am referring to your noble disposition or lack thereof. Well, that's what I came here to hone, after all. I can only hope that you will assent to instruct me in the art of snobbery, Professor Lawrence. 
I do not think you grasp the significance of the responsibility you bear. Do you even know what it means to lead the Leicester Alliance? I take no pleasure in saying this, but much of the chaos in our ranks right now is due to the failings of House Regan's leadership. I intend to set things right, and once I expose you for the fraud you are and reclaim my rightful place, that is precisely what I will do. To be blunt, it would have been better had you never shown your face here. Sheesh, that guy. He just can't be reasoned with. Claude, are you aware of the most recent conflict within the Alliance? Hello to you too, Lawrence. And you'll have to be more specific. The Alliance is always bickering over one thing or another. Margrave Edmund is raising objections over the assignment of his troops to the Eastern Defenses. If you please one noble, another will only gripe. No matter what happens, there will always be conflict. That is just the kind of lackadaisical attitude that causes more conflict among us than necessary. Now, listen to me carefully. House Edmund may not hold much land, but the land they do control is quite rich. They also maintain a thriving port. Their influence is poised to rival even the most powerful players in the Alliance. Yet they claim they cannot spare a fair share of troops? Do you find it acceptable to let such an obviously unreasonable objection stand? It's not as though the threat of Almira to the East has proven all that threatening of late. Such negligence! What makes you so certain the Almirans will not attack us tomorrow? If certain dukes hold back their proper share of support, it will only serve to weaken House Goneril's hold of our eastern flank. <sighs> Calm yourself. I am well aware that the financial situation of House Edmund is quite exceptional. However, what you fail to realize is that they're lacking in troops. They're not lying when they say they don't have that many to spare. As it were, the Almirans have been nothing but peaceful since we refortified Fodlan's Locket. And are you aware that Margrave Edmund paid the majority of the costs for those repairs? Is that so? In fact, it's largely thanks to the skilled craftsmen he assembled that the fortress is now so impregnable. I, for one, wouldn't want to attack a fortress as formidable as that. I do see your point. If House Edmund has already made its fair contribution, then that is all we can ask. Very well. I withdraw my objection. But even the sturdiest fortress needs soldiers to defend it. If we continue to squabble amongst ourselves, it will eventually fall. Well, well. And here I thought he only cared about status. Still, if someone like him really came to lead the Alliance, it would not bode well for Almira. The Earth nurtures the trees and the trees bear fruit. It's the earth itself that gives us all life. O oh, Fodlan, land of plenty, bless us with the gift of delicious food. What are you doing? I, oh, it's just you, Lawrence. I was disturbed by your ridiculous blather. Must you recite it quite so loudly? And can you even call that nonsense poetry when it is utterly ignorant of rhyme and meter? Ouch! You don't hold back, do you? I didn't know you were so particular about poetry. Ha! <laughs> Maybe you have a secret poetry collection of your own hidden somewhere. That's absurd! Where did you hear that? And just what was that poem about? It seemed to me that you were praising the land. But is it not the goddess who nurtures the land? Should your praise not go to her instead? Of course you zero in on that detail. You really are a Fodlin noble through and through. Certainly. Aren't you? I'm not quite the same, no. Though noble blood flows within me, it can't change who I am at heart. Pardon? I think you had best clarify. Listen, Lawrence. You had ambitions of becoming the Alliance's ruler, didn't you? Would you like to try that for real? If you really want it, I wouldn't mind giving up my position. What's this all of a sudden? That is not an offer to be made in jest. I'm not joking around. I've been thinking it for a while now. I originally thought you were like a fox drawn in by the deer of the Alliance. But I was wrong. You're no thoughtless predator. You're trying to properly train the deer around you. Isn't that right? That is my intention. But the ambition is insufficient. To rule well, a certain temperament is required. When we first met, I mistrusted you a great deal. 
and on my father's advice, I observed you closely. That is why I can say this for certain. You possess the qualities necessary to govern. A compliment from you? That's about as rare as a deer standing on its hind legs and doing a jig. Merely a statement of fact, one that is quite relevant to the future of the Alliance. The future of the Alliance, huh? You really are devoted to your cause. Depending on your actions, I may yet see fit to seize your position for myself. Bear that in mind. <laughs> I welcome the idea. It means I can feel safe vanishing whenever I see fit. Vanishing? Do not tell me you intend to die in this conflict. You cannot shape the future if you do not live to see it. Ha! <laughs> First you compliment me, and now you're worrying about me? What have you done with the real Lawrence? No, I'm not going to die. I'm tougher than I look. Besides, this war isn't just for the Alliance anymore. It's going to decide the fate of all Fodlan. It would be cruel to leave you with the burden of uniting all of Fodlan by yourself, don't you think? Burden? Please. If there were none other suitable, I would gladly become a king. Or even an emperor. Well, well. I guess I shouldn't take Lawrence of the famous House Gloucester so lightly. Really, though. Don't you go dying on me either, Lawrence. We're going to need men like you in the age to come. The same to you, Claude. A world without you would be ever so dull. Ah, oh, that fragrance! Could it be? Ferdinand, I cannot help but notice the exquisite tea you're drinking. Not many can appreciate it, let alone recognize it. I'm impressed. Perhaps you would be so good as to indulge me with a cup? By all means, allow me to pour. Ah, what a delightful aroma. When I close my eyes, I feel as though I've wandered into a rose garden. Such a precise, poetic description. But please, drink up. No need to stand on ceremony. Mm, how gracious of you. Very well. Flavor, fragrance, and hue, all in fine harmony. This is a most superior brew. And in a market saturated by pale imitation, no less, you did well to acquire such fine fare. You are clearly quite passionate about tea. And more than just passionate. You know what it takes to brew a fine cup, to say nothing of your flawless etiquette and sterling attentiveness. Certainly, proper etiquette at tea time is one of the surest hallmarks of quality breeding, and the extent of one's attentiveness is quite often indicative of the depth of one's character. The ability of a person of fine stock to exhibit a rich quality of character is precisely what determines whether one is worthy to be called noble, and all of that can be seen in how one handles such a simple thing as a cup of tea. Ah, marvelously put, Lawrence. I can tell you have given much thought to this subject. And if I may, I have always considered you to be the very model of noble comportment. Oh, likewise, this has certainly been an extraordinarily meaningful cup of tea. I wholeheartedly concur. Before we part ways, I would like to offer you some of these leaves. Truly? Well, I'm flattered, but I cannot simply accept them without offering something in exchange. You simply must allow me to host you in turn, by way of recompense. We shall drink from House Gloucester's finest teacups and enjoy the loveliest of its cakes. That sounds exquisite. I look forward to it. That reminds me, Ferdinand. I wonder if a certain rumor has already reached your ears. I suspect I know what you are referring to. A certain noble who caused a stir at one of the local taverns, correct? For someone of status to make such a scene. What a disgrace. I thought just the same. A noble ought to hold himself to a higher standard. It is hardly appropriate to drink and mingle with a tavern full of commoners. Oh, uh, that is not quite what I meant. I do not object to a noble patronizing their local establishments. In fact, I would say such excursions have value. Is that so? I would be very curious to hear what value you mean exactly. But allow me first to venture a guess. Is it that you suppose it is proper for a noble to bolster a town's wealth with his patronage? 
If that is your thinking, then I would counter that whatever one adds to a merchant's coffers seldom makes it to the pockets of the townsfolk. I think that if a noble wishes to use his resources to ease the burdens of the commoners, he ought to go about town and spend it more directly. That is wonderfully insightful, Lawrence. Albeit, not what I had in mind. What I meant was this. We can benefit from crossing the threshold and learning more about regular folk. We scarcely understand the reality of their lives. In turn, they do not know about us. I have heard that some believe we have horns growing from our heads. It is an embarrassing and potentially perilous state of affairs. You are quite right. In fact, that reminds me of something a boy once said to me when I visited a village on my family's territory. He actually asked me if I had a tail. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a laugh now and then. As a man of status, I feel it is my calling to right the world's wrongs, but there is only so much I can do alone. Working in tandem, though, you and I could make tremendous accomplishments. My sentiments exactly. Together we could achieve a great deal. Though the circumstances of birth may have placed one of us in the Empire and the other in the Alliance, we can still study and fight together. Yes, precisely. Together, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. By the way, Lawrence, do you have a tale? Ah, Dorothea, your beauty puts even the most pristine flower to shame. Ah, Lawrence, as silver-tongued as ever. Oh, not at all. I must bid you good day. I see the rumors are true. What a shame. Rumors? About me? Whatever do you mean? Why, that you're always ready to flirt. Unless she's a commoner. Then you'll bid her good day as quickly as possible. Like you did with me just now. Are we so unpleasant to speak to, us commoners? That is a rather... Uh, pointed question, but I do happen to have an answer for you. As the heir to House Gloucester, I am in search of a bride of suitable social status. The Alliance isn't fully unified. I require someone who will help bring it together. I think you could find plenty of suitable women, even among the masses. Do not be so certain. A lady who marries me must be prepared to enter noble society, whether she wishes to or not. It is a complex web of etiquette and expectation, not a world one could easily step into without the proper upbringing. What's more, House Gloucester would hardly see much benefit were I to join myself to the household of a common. Oh, I can imagine. Well, I suppose that means any friendship between you and I is doomed as well. Isn't that a rather excessive conclusion? You want someone to birth your house's next generation? I want someone to share my life with. I'm not even an option in your eyes, and you're hardly viable in mine. However, we're all friends here, aren't we? So I suppose politeness at the very least is in order. Looking as lovely as ever today, Dorothea. Oh, save it for your noble girls, Lawrence. I'm not in the mood. I was only being polite. And it really was quite wonderful to be so near your elegance. Now, if you'll please excuse me. Now hold just a moment. I have tolerated quite enough of this impertinence. Not a word has escaped my lips to imply that you are anything less than a highly attractive woman. But I am the heir to a noble house. I have a duty. Thus, I am unable to engage in courtship with you. What is it about my circumstances that you seem to find so very amusing? Um, all of it? You're no different from the men who flirted with me when I was in the opera. As long as you're getting what you're after, you don't much care what a woman wants, needs, or feels. That is truly what you think of me? I, I am afraid you have completely misunderstood. Oh, have I? Do explain. If noble status were my only priority, then I could be married a hundred times over by now. But birthright is not sufficient for me. I am not looking merely for an accessory. Marriage is a relationship of mutual respect, support, and trust. If my wife and I are of the same mind and of the same worth, then together we can achieve anything. That is why I make overtures to so many ladies. I am in search of an ideal. 
You're searching for someone who matches your vision of a perfect spouse? <laughs> How odd. So am I. And everyone else. My standards are somewhat more exacting, but yes, I suppose on that point we are similar. Please understand that I'm acting with the best of intentions in search of a partner. You're more serious than I thought. And so earnest, it's, it's almost adorable. If you met a peasant girl and fell madly in love, would you be able to give her up? Break her heart? I would have no choice. The worlds of the nobility and the common folk are simply too far apart. I cannot choose to abandon my duty merely for the sake of a fleeting emotion. Lawrence, you're dangerously close to dedicating your life to the lie that nobility is something special. I hope you realize that before it's too late. <sighs> too much fighting. I need a moment's peace. Why, if it isn't Dorothea? What are you doing here? Patrolling the grounds, there have been entirely too many raids as of late. And yourself? Nothing. Not really. I just needed a bit of quiet. It is regrettable to see you so troubled by this war. This is not a burden any commoner should bear. Don't trouble yourself on my account. So, did you ever find that wife you were looking for? This is hardly the time or place for me to be searching for a bride. Why do you ask? The truth is... I know this is sudden, but there's a war on, and who knows what tomorrow brings, right? Go on. I've always been quite fond of you. But I've also... well... I've given up on you. Uh, that is... sudden? But why would you give up on me? You're from a noble family, and I'm a commoner. It would have been scandalous. I did what I could to be worthy of you, but you never noticed. So, I've resigned myself to a lonesome life. My feelings unrequited. You found it so easy to give up on me? Truly? This war has changed my mind on a great many things, you know. I've given it all a lot of thought. I like seeing you flustered, you know that? It makes joking with you so much more fun. Joking? Yes, joking. It used to be my job to pluck at people's heartstrings, remember? And I'm much better at it than you are. Admit it, Sir Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> I can see defeat, but... But your words have cut straight through to my heart. And now I must tell you how I feel. I've always been charmed by you. I do not think I realized just how thoroughly until this moment. <laughs> you and I both know that doesn't matter. Not really. We can never get married. Perhaps not now. I've not determined where I stand when it comes to marriage. But when this war is over, I will make a decision. You will, huh? Gosh. I sure do hope I'm not already married by then. Oh, that's hardly a concern. No one you find could possibly compare to me. <laughs> to find the analog of your beauty in nature, I can turn only to the lily. Only that flower is so sweet and so delicate as to approach your loveliness. Why, just look at these soft, delicate fingertips you have. It is as though they could blossom into fragrant lilies before my very eyes. If you're so wild about flowers, why don't you try a flower shop? Ugh. Oh, wow. That was... I'm sorry I saw that, but I am so glad I saw that. Oh, did you not realize? I was only testing her. Any woman who is taken in by such simple flattery is ill-suited to my noble disposition. Oh, okay, I'm glad you explained it, because I thought you just got rejected. Just flat out, no way to make yourself feel better about it, rejected. And the reason, your nobleness, is because that is really not the way you go about hitting on a girl. Oh, is it not? And I suppose you consider yourself an expert on the subject. Pay attention, kid. Maybe you'll learn something. 
When I saw you, I just had to come over and say hello. Because finding you here uh, feels like fate. Maybe we could go get some tea. Get to know each other better. I think you must have mistaken me for someone else. Someone who cares. Please excuse me. Exquisite. Simply masterful. When is the wedding? That's weird. Girls usually fall for that speech. You must have spooked her. To think that the noble House Gautier would be blessed with such a graceful and charming air. Please, I'm a much better heir than a self-important failure like you. Uh, this is not worth my time. You took the words right out of my mouth. I just wanted to say that I've been watching and I'm really impressed by how hard you work. Very dedicated for someone so young. Oh, uh, thank you. I really admire your everything, but you know, everybody needs to relax now and then. I was wondering if maybe you and me could... Uh, I'm quite busy. I should get going. Bye. That was difficult to watch. Lawrence, ever since you started hanging around, I've had no luck. Usually, if I show a girl I'm mature, noble, and interested, she's an easy catch. Your logic is sound, I will admit, but your results are less than entirely convincing. Honestly, all this talk of maturity and experience from a shallow person like you is rather laughable. Shallow? What? Like your nobleness as some properly cultured man of the world? Naturally, my bearing is as elegant and refined as silk. Observe. You seem to be deep in thought. Is there something on your mind? Please, allow me to lend you my ear. I will gladly shoulder any of your burdens. Oh, thank you. But it's not something I really want to talk about. So harsh. Even the slightest worry, I would have been happy to listen. <laughs> Why, yes. Your silky bearing was quite impressive. You're always going on about nobility, but that's no way to win a woman. Your problem, and I may have told you this before, at least twice, your problem is you're pretentious. <laughs> That's rich, coming from you. Your bearing is so flippant that you utterly fail to gain a lady's trust. How can you not see that? All I'm failing to see is you getting a girl's attention. How dare you? Ah, uh, listen. I'm sorry. That was mean. And you're probably right about me not being serious enough. I will concede I feel the same. Enough at least to keep your advice at the back of my mind. I was a touch too stubborn. It's the same in battle, isn't it? If you don't bend a little, you fail. Even so? Yeah, with that being said... I will outclass you, Sylvain. Bring it on, Lawrence. I beg your pardon. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fi- oh, I'm fine. I just twisted my ankle. Oh, that won't do. Come, take my hand. Let's get you to the infirmary. Are you sure it's okay to be seen helping me? Uh, why would it not be? I thought you only extended your kindness to the nobility. Certainly not. To aid a commoner in need is the most noble endeavor of all. Not only that, but you were injured by my carelessness. It is doubly my duty to assist. In that case, I'll gladly accept your offer. Oh, good. There does not appear to be any real swelling, so you should heal swiftly. Thank you so much for escorting me. Walking on it will still be unpleasant. Allow me to lend you my shoulder, at least as far as your room. If you're still offering to help, then I can't say no. There you are, safe and sound. I will take my leave. Thank you again, Lawrence. You know, I think I've learned something about you. What is that? In truth, 
It's not that you only extend your kindness to noble women. It's that you can't even see us of lower birth. Excuse me? You and I have been together all this time, but never once did you look me in the eye. I hadn't noticed. But you will have to excuse any perceived rudeness. As the heir to House Gloucester, I have a duty. I must ask you to forget about me. Farewell. Forget about him? What could that possibly mean? Mercedes, I have to insist that you take up a position behind me on the battlefield. I must protect the common folk, and you have been in danger rather frequently of late. I appreciate your concern, but I can take care of myself. Everything is about nobility and common folk with you, Lawrence. It's tiresome. Tiresome? I am only fulfilling my duty. Is that to say you would have left me lying on the floor in pain, had it not been your duty to assist? You mean when you were hurt on my account? I still would have assisted you, as any commoner would have. It is simply a matter of perspective. And if I were common-born, I would not have simply let you leave without... Never mind. Forgive me. Excuse me? Are you implying that you would have taken advantage of me if you were lowborn? What? No! And I am no longer interested in the hypothetical nature of this conversation. Oh, Lawrence, you'll never change. What do you mean? I find myself growing irritated just looking at you. Is that so? I fail to see exactly how I am so irritating. You claim that you don't want to be involved with common women, don't you? But I know deep in your heart you love being around us. You're willfully ignorant to that. I hope you know what you're depriving yourself of. I am certain I've told you before that my marriage must be beneficial to House Gloucester. I've not the time for fruitless courtship. Fruitless? Oh, how can you say such things? What would happen if you fell in love with a commoner? Nothing at all. I accept the role that I must play, and any sacrifice that must accompany it. So, your duty as a noble is more important than your own feelings? Naturally. If that's true, then your whole existence is rather sad. I am afraid you misunderstand. This is my choice. There is no cause for pity. I think I've heard enough. I have to go. Mercedes, I have heard that you are the daughter of Imperial Nobility. Is that the case? It is. And you have a crest as well. Is that not so? Again, it is. Why did you not tell me? I was under the impression you were a commoner. I didn't mean to hide it from you, but you never asked. Besides, I am considered common now. I don't care to flaunt my noble past or my crest. I have no desire to return to that status. Then, if I may speak hypothetically a moment, does that mean that if a nobleman were to offer you his hand in marriage, you would decline? Not at all. That's a separate matter entirely. Even if I were to fall in love, regardless of their social status, I'm not looking to marry right now. Oh, what a relief. Uh, forgive my rudeness. I am merely envious of your flexible outlook. It is a posture that I might very well adopt. Not to say that I hang upon your every word, of course. You mean in terms of love and marriage? Precisely. Status should be no impediment to love. But if you marry a woman who isn't a noble, then haven't you neglected your duty? Not exactly, no. What I said was that my marriage must benefit House Gloucester. So long as that holds true, the bloodline of my partner is actually irrelevant. For instance, if she bore a crest and was at one time considered noble... Well, now that doesn't sound flexible at all. How can you know if someone will benefit your family? Would you investigate her before allowing yourself feelings? That doesn't sound very noble of you. That is not what I... <laughs> A 
sorry, Lawrence. I was only teasing. I'm sure your lack of tact is what women find so irresistible. Come again? Oh, nothing at all. I hope you do your family proud and fulfill your duty. Yes, I most certainly will. fish are great too, but uh, <laughs> there's nothing like a good cut of meat. May I join you? Hey, Lawrence. You here to eat? It looks like you barely grabbed anything. Please, this amount will suffice for me. There's no need to compare our portions. No wonder you're so skinny. My little sis eats more than you. Come on, have some of mine. You need it more than I do. Uh, you offer me half-eaten scraps? The nerve! With manners like that, even a nobleman would be an absolute disgrace. Have you no dignity? You're pretty touchy, huh? It's probably just because you're hungry. Raphael, please, do you mind? I cannot enjoy the simple pleasure of a meal in these conditions. Why can't you enjoy your meal? You don't like what's on the menu? You wait here. I'll go to the kitchen and find something tastier for you. That won't be necessary. Please, just let me eat. In peace. Alone. I don't think you get it, Lawrence. Nothing goes with a meal better than good company. If leading the Alliance is your goal, you should really try eating with other people first. I'm afraid I fail to see the connection between leadership and dining. If you want to be a leader, you have to know how to get along with different types of people, right? If you really want to get to know someone, all you have to do is share a meal with them. Quite the contrary, unfortunately. It seems the more time I spend eating with you, the less likely we are to become friends. The, the more you eat with someone, the more you learn about them. Their likes, their dislikes, you know? You might get some of their food that way too. You can eat more and bulk up. <laughs> All that talking made me hungry again. I'm gonna go get seconds. Oh, what an absolute bother. But... I suppose he does have a point about observations of character at the dinner table. Ah, oh, so hungry. I gotta eat something. Again, Raphael? Here, perhaps this will suffice. Really? I can have this? But don't you need to eat after all that training? We can't have you starving, can we? Your strength is a great asset. It would be a terrible loss if you fell faint in battle. Besides, no true noble can look upon the hungry with indifference. S -s seriously Wow, that's awful generous of you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But listen while you eat. I believe it would benefit you to pay more attention to the way you carry yourself in the company of your betters. It is the duty of the nobility to protect the common folk. And, in return, the commoner is expected to show deference and respect. Naturally, I understand that there is a certain tendency toward familiarity because we are classmates. However... Oh, that was tasty. Raphael, did you hear a word I just said? Oh, hey! I sent my little sis some of that fancy treat you gave me a while back. She wrote back to say that it was tasty, and to thank you. So thanks. That is excellent news. I'm pleased to hear that you both enjoyed it. But there's no need for you to thank me. It was actually a gesture of gratitude in the other direction, from me to you. Thanks to the wisdom of your words, I have begun to consider my approach to dining in a completely new way. Mealtime has proven to be ideal for the study of character. It is a tool I intend to make great use of as the leader of the Alliance. Yep. It's just like I told you. Food tastes better when you eat with good company. That's not quite what I meant. <laughs> no matter. You are satisfied, I trust? I could probably keep eating, but I'm ready to train. All right. Time to get back to it so I can protect my buddy, Lawrence. <laughs> I've not quite gotten through to you, have I? It is not the duty of a commoner to protect a noble. <laughs> that is fundamentally against the order of society. But 
If you hadn't given me food just now, I couldn't have survived on the battlefield because I'd be too weak to train. Who'd take care of my little sis if I wasn't around? She'd probably end up starving to death as well. In a way, by feeding me, you're protecting her too. It was only a little food. There's no need to get carried away. You're a real decent noble, you know that? Worrying so much about my sister and all. All I gotta do is protect you. Then you protect everyone else, right? I'm not certain your logic is sound, but your strength is undeniable. Very well. Do as you like. Dining certainly is a window to the soul. Eating with you has helped me to see that I've misjudged you. You're not some gluttonous simpleton. You are grateful for the protection the nobility offers and eager to emulate our example. Ignatz, let us take a short break. I will pour tea. Please choose a teapot for us to use. You want me to pick one? I don't see any other Ignatz around here, do you? Go on now, we're wasting time. The pots are over here. I will leave the selection to your judgment. Ah, uh, let's see. How about this? That's rather plain. Why did you choose that one? The tea you chose has a very subtle taste, as well as a smooth, light texture. Such an unassuming tea calls for an unassuming pot, and one that complements the tea's color. In addition, the pot I selected has a floral design. Although we can't go for a walk today, we can still bask a little in nature's beauty. Very interesting. You know, you have an absolutely marvelous aesthetic eye. Precisely what I would expect from the son of a merchant house that has enjoyed the Gloucester's patronage for so many years. After we graduate, when you begin your trade in earnest, I will introduce you to my father. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I'm afraid I'm already on the path to becoming a knight. Ah, right, you are a second son. Still, your eye for beauty is a talent that should not go to waste. Very well. If you are to be a knight, then I shall happily take you into my service. Ah, well... Hmm. What, does that displease you? Not at all. I just need a little time to think it over. His eye for the arts is unwavering, but in all other matters he is woefully indecisive. Ignatz, hello. What are you up to? You frightened me. Oh, calm yourself. What is it that you're drawing? I thought I'd jot down some sketches of everyone while they're training. And then later on, I'll try to practice their moves on my own. Mm. But I can't really concentrate on sketching if someone's watching me. Just sketches, hmm? Even so, they're lovely. There's such life in them. It's as if they're moving on the page before my very eyes. Y you really think so? You know, I always hoped to be an artist. With skills like that, I'm quite certain you could easily make a living of it. And your demeanor is different when you draw. Bolder somehow. Ah, yes, there's an idea. Perhaps in the future you will join my retinue as my personal painter. Wait, have we not discussed this arrangement already? I had decided to take you into my service as a knight, had I not? Becoming a knight was my father's idea. Being an artist is out of the question, I'm afraid. So you've said. Well then, I suppose you shall simply have to become a knight who also paints. A knight who also paints? I have seen your talent and can attest to it. Your gifts are too great to wither away in obscurity. A knight with the rare gift of artistic talent would be most welcome in my employ. <laughs> I had never thought of that. Still, I don't understand why you'd want me as one of your knights. As a fighter, I'm unremarkable. There is more to knighthood than combat. Courtly manners, a dignified bearing, and an aesthetic sensibility are also essential. A knight with an eye for art and the talent to create it is sure to improve the image of the nobility. <laughs> Lawrence, I'd never have guessed you were prone to such eccentric ideas. Thank you. I'm feeling a little more confident after hearing your kind words. Oh, no cause for thanks. 
it is a noble's duty to provide guidance to those in need. Lysithia, do you have a moment? There is a matter of significance I'd like to discuss with you. I know you're always seeking the attention of ladies, but why are you wasting your breath on me? Don't be silly. I'm here to discuss Fodlin's future. I'm not so sure I'm the one being silly. Actually, I'm busy. Stuff to do. Now, hold on just a moment. House Ordelia will never benefit from such a narrow-minded mentality. I was under the impression you were interested in me as a person. What do house matters have to do with anything? As it stands, the bonds between Alliance Lords are quite weak. If this state of affairs persists, I'm afraid those bonds may dissolve entirely. I couldn't care less. House Ordelia may be small, but a small house is fettered by fewer obligations than a larger one. Apply yourselves actively in diplomacy, negotiate wisely, and you could do much to help maintain peace among the neighboring lords. The recognition of those lords would benefit your house immensely. To that end, why not start with me, the heir to House Gloucester? It couldn't hurt for us to become friends, could it? Yes, yes, of course, when the time comes. But right now, I'm quite busy. Maybe later. As it is, I'm studying magic for the benefit of Fodlin's future. And I would appreciate it if you left me to it. Ah, I see. Then forgive the intrusion. I will take my leave of you for now. But if there is any way I can be of help, to you or your house, I hope that you won't hesitate to ask. After all, as I'm sure you know, the future of all Fodlin is my responsibility. <laughs> the future, he says. Hm. As though I have a future. didn't work. Odd. My logic was sound. Or so I thought. Ah, Lysithia. I've just happened upon some lovely tea leaves. Would you care to join me for a cup? Nope. Busy. While I admire your dedication to research, you simply must take breaks now and again for the sake of your health. I am perfectly capable of knowing when to stop. I'm no child, I'll have you know. Come now. Take just a brief respite. Look, I've even brought snacks to go with the tea. Ooh, that actually looks pretty tasty. All right, all right, fine. Well, what do you think? These are made especially for my house. I've loved them since I was a boy. Oh, geez, wow. Actually, this is delicious. You have excellent taste, Lawrence. Have as much as you'd like. For the sake of our friendship, I consider it well worth the investment. I'd like to know more about you, Lysithia. Where did you learn such a command of magic? When you were a child, what kind of... <sighs> Come on, can't we just enjoy the snacks? I loathe talking about myself. Openness is a prerequisite to successful diplomacy. You'll learn that when you take your first real steps into high society. Can you stop with the kid treatment? I mean, really, is age the only thing you consider when engaging with others? But there's nothing the matter with being young. There is a role to be played at every stage in life. That is how we learn and grow. Are you even listening? Ugh, it's like you can't even help yourself but to continue treating me like a child. I absolutely recognize your raw ability. You possess quite a rare gift for magic. I hope we can find a way for you to use that gift to help as many people as we can. Surely you can agree to that at least. You really are relentless. I'll spell this out for you once more. I don't care. You're headstrong, just like me. That very quality will ensure a better future for Fodlin. I, sir, am nothing like you. You're bullheaded and boorish, and utterly fixated on the future. All you care about is what's to come. Sure, it's all well and good to be thinking about such lofty things. However, for me, the future's a very long ways off. Better to focus on the present, on the here and now. Thanks for the tea. Lysithia? P. 
picking wildflowers? Seems such a common activity for someone like you. To me, the most beautiful flower is the one that blossoms by its own strength. Lysithia, please accept this as... Knock it off! Uh, sorry. It's just that the thorns are a bit sharp, and I'm not a fan of killing nature. True sympathy, even for the smallest wildflower. I admire your kindness. When you inherit your house, that kindness will be a balm to your subjects. They and the neighboring lords will trust you instinctively. Politics. Again. The Alliance has been harmed in the past by lords who thought only of themselves, who saw others as a means to an end. But you, you understand others' pain. With you around, I am quite hopeful that the Alliance will flourish again. That's not something you should get your hopes up about. House Ordelia will end with my father. I'm sorry? I understand you have a distaste for politics, but could you really allow a noble house three centuries old to fall to ruin? This goes beyond you and even your house. What would become of Fodlin if all its noble houses withered away in such a manner? The people would be in disarray. The balance of power would crumble. Chaos would rule. No, it's just... My body, unfortunately, is not built to last. And I have no siblings. When I die, that's the end. What? Noble birth has been nothing but a source of pain for me. For me, and for my parents. We got sucked into the rebellion in the Empire, and it led to... many responsibilities for us. The things we went through. I can hardly bear to speak of it. All I want now is to give my mother and father the chance to live out their years in peace. I intend to do whatever I can to ease the hardships of our people while I still have life left in me. Naturally, I worry about what will come to pass after I'm gone, but I'm sure things will work out so long as there are people like you around working so hard for a better future. So you have been thinking of the future, even despite all of that. I... I am so sorry, I had no idea. Lysithia, I have offended you most persistently. Please find it in your heart to forgive my impudence. Don't worry about it. If you're so insistent upon being my friend, I'm sure more tasty snacks and tea will help persuade me. But if speaking of the future holds such importance, better to find someone who actually has one. I understand. Yes, let's take tea together again soon. Scythia, it's no good for you to expose yourself to such strong sunlight. And a chill could steal upon you at any moment. You really ought to have worn a mantle. <laughs> you have been running yourself absolutely ragged. Would you please consider taking some rest? Enough is enough. I am fully aware. Now, stop following me. I'm only concerned for your health. That's great and all. But I feel fine today, and I'm perfectly capable of caring for myself. I don't have time to take a rest. I'm overloaded with work, and I have less time than everyone else. I just want to do my own thing. Bring order to the Alliance, and put my parents' minds at ease. No need to rush. How can you be so certain your lifespan is shortened anyway? I do not know who decided that, but consider me skeptical. If you are healthy now, and if you take proper care of yourself, you ought to live just as long as anyone else. That's all well and good, but those vitamin-packed sweets you brought tasted weird. If you want a healthy body, then you need to start with what you eat. You have a point, but those health sweets are gross. I sent for the finest in wholesome, healthy treats for you. I asked only for the very sweetest. That was pretty nice of you. I'm sorry, Lawrence. Thank you for being so thoughtful. Still, I don't need bushels and bushels of them. Gaining a ton of weight won't exactly lengthen my lifespan either. I mean, I'd like to be able to hang out with you as much as possible. And for as long as possible. Truly? Oh, I'm so glad. I feel the same. Even in an otherwise perfect future, 
I still cannot see a happy life for myself without you in it. In fact, the more time we spend together, the more essential to me you become. So let us walk side by side toward a future together. Yikes! Keep it down, will you? Why are you flustered? What is there to be embarrassed about? You know I will always care for you. Okay, okay, noted. Will you just calm down already? You need not worry about a thing. I will look after you no matter what may come. After all, the future of Fodlan rests upon my shoulders, does it not? <laughs> I won't give up on myself either. Thanks for caring, Lawrence. Hello, Marianne. You're well, I hope. I am, Lawrence. Thank you. I cannot help but notice you do not look it. Is that so? I feel fine. Hmm. W was there something you needed? Uh, how unseemly of me. My apologies. It is not my intention to stare. Does something about me seem... off? Oh, not at all. I was just remembering your father. Or rather, comparing my experience of him to you. Your father, Margrave Edmund. He is one of the shrewdest nobles in all the Alliance, with a noted gift for pointed speech. On and beyond the battlefield, his words have the power to move friend and foe alike. My own father has said he would not want to make an enemy of him. Naturally, I am of the same mind. Your father is blessed with gifts of confidence and eloquence. Yet compared to him, you seem always reticent and downcast. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cause you discomfort. It's just that the contrast between you and your father is striking. I have very little in common with my adoptive father. But he sent you to Garrick Mock. Clearly, he sees potential in you. I think I see it, too. Yes, a certain charm. Gravitas, if you will. Just like him. Oh. I can't say that I know too much about him. I should be going now. Y yes, y yes, of course. Please, take care. Oh, such grace, such serenity. How could such a beauty be hiding in plain sight? With a little polish, she would shine magnificently. Tell me, Marianne, do you have a love of flowers? Um, well, I don't dislike them. I've happened upon a spot that's just teeming with splendid blossoms. Would you like me to show you? I think I would rather stay. It would be for the best if you kept your distance from me. Well, perhaps I could pick a few of the nicest and present them to you. With a beautiful bouquet in your arms, your magnificence would rival even that of the goddess. I would never compare myself to the beauty of the goddess. I see. Well, I don't mind. Oh, that is a lovely handkerchief you've got there. Did you know that a handkerchief reflects the sensitivity of its owner? Yours tells me you have quite a refined sensibility. If you only applied yourself a little more to the rest of your ensemble, there is no doubt in my mind. If you admire my handkerchief so much, you may have it. Uh, no, please, that is not what I meant. It was a gift from my adoptive father. I didn't choose it for myself. I'm sure I don't share his refined sensibilities, though, considering how little he and I have in common. I have to go. Such beauty. And yet, with just a little polish, she'd be a marvel. If only she'd put in some effort. Hmm. I wonder. Indeed, I shall make it my mission to awaken her beauty. There is nothing that I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, cannot do.
Hmm? What is it, Marianne? I'm curious why you've been eating your meals near me as of late. I'm not much for conversation. I'm always at a loss for words, and I never know how to respond to questions. Well, it's true that there are some who prefer a lively dinner table, but I prefer to eat in peace. With you, my meals are a relaxing experience. In fact, you're the most peaceful dining companion I've ever had. Really? There is a real grace and fluidity to your every movement. I greatly appreciate refined table manners. Observing you all this time, I believe I've realized what is so striking about you. Your beauty comes from the heart. It is an inner beauty. It is not some flamboyant pageantry, a product of external adornment or grooming. When I first noticed it, I thought that it could use some refinement, a little polish. But I was mistaken. You are perfect in your natural state, just as you are. You think I'm beautiful? Just the way I am? Certainly. To add a superficial luster on top of what you already possess would be offensively redundant. No one's ever said anything like that to me before. Alas, I am the only one with eyes. But perhaps it is for the best that your beauty not be revealed to all the world. Yes, it is certainly better that only I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, can appreciate your true magnificence. And on that note, I bid you farewell. What a strange person. But being called beautiful just the way I am, that was nice to hear. Ah, Marianne, I've been meaning to thank you. The books that you lent me have proved most fascinating. Would you permit me to offer you tea as a token of my gratitude? Um, I'm a little busy right now. Maybe later tonight? Of course. I will look forward to it. Thank you for inviting me over. Certainly. Thank you for coming. Oh, and please, relax. This is no formal occasion. Oh, this tea tastes so good. Doesn't it just? This is my absolute favorite. I'm pleased you like it. This pastry may suit your palate also. It is commonly paired with this tea in my homeland. Ah, it's sweet. It complements the astringency of the tea. You have exquisite taste, and there is plenty more where that came from. We simply must do this again. You want to spend more time with me? Naturally. Well, that's... Actually, there's something I need to say. Yes? What is it? I've been keeping this from you for a while. It's... It's about my crest. It's just terrible. I... Please, that's quite enough. Oh. You're trembling. If uttering this secret hurts you, then I have no desire to hear it. It... It's just... Your smile is a greater gift to me than any truth. Whatever you have hitherto concealed, I am certain it is essential to you, and I do wish to know it. But not until the day arrives when you can tell me with a smile on your face. I am not the sort of man to prize my own knowledge over others' happiness, you know. Besides, the mystery is part of your charm. <laughs> You're funny, Lawrence. There, that's what I mean. Your beauty is always captivated, but that smile truly warms my heart. This is the first time I've smiled in so long, and I have your kindness to thank for that. <laughs> as I've said, you are perfect just as you are. But I suppose I can take a little credit. Yes, your radiant smile shall illuminate all the world. With me by your side, you will not be able to help it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Lawrence, at it again. Hello, Hilda. Are you training too? If that's the case, I may have to revise my opinion of you. Increased strength and skill would serve as perfect complements to your beauty and esteemed lineage. Um, 
No, I just left something here. I don't share your tireless work ethic. You're quite something. I don't think I've ever seen you take a break. When the fate of all Fodlan rests on your shoulders, the rigors of training seem paltry by comparison. Besides, when my admirers see that even an individual of my talent possesses a diligent work ethic, it is sure to inspire them. I see. But I was wondering... <laughs> Never mind. You're clearly busy. Oh, is there something you require? What do you need? There is nothing I cannot handle. Well, the trouble is, I'm no good at fighting. I'm a fragile young lady, not a fearsome warrior. I didn't even want to join the Academy, honestly. My brother made me. Of course. For a delicate flower such as yourself, no doubt battle must present a terrible hardship. <laughs> it does. It truly does. So, I was wondering if, in the next training session, you do my fighting for me? I mean, I can put on a tough, I'm actually fighting kind of air, but that's not quite enough on its own. Please, leave all of the difficulty to me. I shall permit no harm to befall you. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. In that case, I'll focus on giving a convincingly soldierly performance. You know, Lawrence, you're a good guy. Not that I'd have expected anything less from a noble. With each of your foes that I vanquish, I shall only become ever stronger. Yes, leave it all to me. <laughs> what a guy. And all I had to do was ask. Hmm. Maybe I'll have a snack. Thank you, Lawrence. You've done so much for me. You've been a tremendous help. It was but a trifle. Surely there was no small amount of danger, but in the interest of experience, I was happy to endure. You're so strong that I can't help but feel safe in your presence. Yes, of course. Although, no matter how much brute strength we bring to bear, it is important that there be a leader on the field as well. Without someone possessed of my sound judgment and adaptability, we would surely be lost. Surely, yes. My thoughts exactly. But, um... Hmm? What is it? I'm going to keep providing support from the back. You wouldn't mind doing more fighting for me, would you? Oh, well, uh, physically, I can, certainly, but if you mean on an everyday basis... Uh... I knew you would. You have the generous soul of a true noble. I'll have to write back home and sing your praises. Really? You mean to your father and brother? Oh, yes. I have to write my big brother pretty often, as a matter of fact. He gets upset if I don't. And yet, I never have much to write about. I've been really straining for topics. That must strike you as a terrible nuisance, the idea of me blabbing about you in my letters. Nuisance? Oh, hardly. Your brother is one of the foremost commanders of the Alliance. I can think of no higher accolade than to have my name passed onto his noble ear. Then I'll tell him about all your thrilling exploits. Although, if you can't help, that's okay too. I'll find something else to write about. Oh, fear not. I shall show you exploits of a nature more thrilling than you could ever dream. Incidentally, when you write to him, please do not refer to me merely as Lawrence. <laughs> please use my full name, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. This will be an excellent opportunity to advance the status of the Gloucester name. <laughs> what a funny boy. There's yet another option. Lawrence, what are you doing? Oh, hello, Hilda. I'm using these pieces to represent soldiers on the battlefield. This will allow me to better visualize concepts of strategy. Very good. Is it fun? Oh, it is utterly engrossing. Look, swap out just certain pieces for others, and the board completely changes. Then, even considering the same types of units, employing different individuals calls for a new set of plans. Oh, I see. Or, I kind of see. It's hard for me to grasp really complex things like this. 
Nonsense. It's thanks to your many requests that I've been adapting my fighting style of late. Working to accommodate you has convincingly shown me how essential it is to rethink tactics on a continual basis. After all, the risk of getting hurt is greatly reduced if you are prepared for any situation. So now I will be ready for anything. Lawrence, you're so wonderful, I'm at a loss for words. I'm not just saying that to flatter you either, honestly. Tell me something, Hilda. Did you make all of these ludicrous requests of me purely so that I might have the opportunity to develop myself? Because if so, I am deeply moved. Thank you for caring so thoughtfully and passionately for my personal growth. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> if you will permit me to return the favor, I do have one request to make of you. Will you hear me out? Uh, I'm not usually one for fielding requests, but I can make an exception in your case, I suppose. I would be so pleased to have the opportunity to observe you in action, in the heat of battle. Would you be so kind as to oblige me? Oh, very well. You've convinced me. But if it gets too intense, you'll help me out, right? Lawrence! Lawrence, look! What is it, Hilda? Ah, a letter from your brother? That's right. Though part of me thinks it's some stranger imitating my brother's handwriting. He's never given me this much praise. Hilda, you've learnt the value of persistence. You're really maturing, stuff like that. Usually his letters are like, I'm worried about you and stop being so lazy. Since I have fought by your side, I can assure you that his praise is genuine and entirely deserved. I've written about fighting in plenty of letters. Why is he so gushy this time around? I would venture to guess that your depictions of battle are more passionate than before. It's no surprise that such authenticity would resonate with a veteran warrior like your brother. If that's true, I have you to thank. You've inspired me to throw myself into battle. Does everyone think I'm a tough warrior now? I don't want to be stuck with their high expectations. Would that be so terrible? You are gifted, you know. Not to say that your lackadaisical nature has failed to endear itself to me. I'll choose to take that as a compliment. Speaking of letters, did you keep your promise? Did you, uh, mention me? I did. I told my brother all about you. I said you are a uniquely gifted leader who could inspire people to be their best selves. And I said that you'll be a real asset in this new era. I also told him how I wished you could join our family. He responded that he'd be honored to call you his brother. Truly? Oh, to have such a valiant brother would be beyond my wildest expectations. Um, Lawrence, you know what I mean about you joining our family, right? I believe I do. And I confess, if I am correct, that the same thought has preoccupied me as well. But you must forgive me. Now is not the time. Before we can consider our own future, we must first end this war. We must secure a peaceful world. And if we do attain a peaceful world, then what? Come on! Just say it. As much as I'd like to grant that request, I cannot. This is something that will deeply affect our lives. It must be said at the proper time and place, with the most artfully chosen words, and the perfect offering. I am Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, after all. <laughs> usually one for waiting around, but maybe I'll make an exception in his case. Hey Lawrence, got a minute? Certainly. I trust you're well? Doing great. I found a load of old weapons, just got done hauling them out of storage. Old weapons, you say? If there are any interesting swords in there, I would love to see them. They might only be good for training, but with a little care, who knows? Here, have some oil. And uh, why exactly are you giving this to me? Like I said, they need a little care. With a bit of maintenance, some of these will really shine. Yes, I heard you. So why did you give me the oil? 
It's for polishing, Lawrence. Don't tell me you've never polished a weapon before. But that is hardly a task befitting someone of my station. If you had an exquisite blade, something of real historical significance to complement my noble heritage, that would be another matter. In that case, appraise while you polish, you're bound to find something good working through these. This seems as fine an occasion as any to air my grievances. I am a highborn noble. As such, it is my sworn duty to protect the common folk. I have no time for trivialities. What's more, you seem to be under the misapprehension that you can order me about. Please think carefully about how you speak to me. I'm not ordering you around. And I'm not talking to you as a noble, either. I'm asking you to help me with this. As a friend. I am your friend, but I am also a noble. Those two qualities are not mutually exclusive. Oh, good. Let's get to it then, buddy. Hello, Leone. Busy as usual, I see. Yep, lots to do. Not like you fancy nobles. Hey, can't you see all this stuff I'm carrying? Come on, move over already. Alas, I cannot comply with your request. Can't even ask a noble to take a step to the side, huh? That's a joke, right? You're kidding. You've injured your foot. I could tell immediately by the way you are favoring it. Uh, what? Heavy lifting will only worsen the injury. Please, permit me to examine it. Hey, cut that out! Isn't that improper or something, bowing to a commoner? I am not bowing to you. I am tending your wound. Th that's not what it'll look like. Hey, it's fine. Leave it. Easing the burdens of the common folk is a natural obligation of the nobility. Now hold still and keep quiet for a moment, if you would be so kind. That's a real pretty way to talk about sitting around in castles doing nothing. Let me tell you, everyone in my village is so grateful to be taxed up to the eyeballs for the privilege of... Ow! Oh, it's quite swollen. And you're feverish. Fortunately, I do have an ointment here that should be of use. What? You just carry that stuff around with you? Certainly. It won't do to be unprepared if I happen across someone in need. I don't get you, Lawrence. It seems I've neglected to pack bandages. I'm afraid this handkerchief will have to suffice. What, that fancy thing? Bit of a waste, isn't it? Hey, no thanks. I don't need some noble's pity. What about the help of a friend? I am as much that as I am a noble, if you recall. More of your weird logic. There, that should ease the pain. And since you are recovering, allow me to carry this burden for you as well. There we are. Now, farewell. I really don't understand that guy. Oh no, I completely forgot to thank him. Hey, got a minute? Ah, huh, Leone, are we to sharpen swords again? No, I came to give you this handkerchief back. Sorry, I know I held on to it for a while. You lent me this, remember? I recall giving it to you. It is a noble's duty to give to the common folk. In return, the commoner need only pay respect. That's nice. You left out the part where the nobles take all the stuff the regular folks make? Yes, the common folk give the fruits of their labor, willingly, I might add, as a token of that respect. The head of San Village offers his tribute in exactly that spirit, you know. San? That's... My village? You knew? Of course. We granted exclusive hunting rights to San and forbade outsiders from poaching. In fact, when we received complaints about just that, we hired mercenaries to deal with the issue. So that's what brought Gerald. Hmm? What was that? Nothing. Look, just take the handkerchief. I'm returning something I borrowed from a friend. Very well. As your friend, I will accept it. You know, I really wish you wouldn't think of nobles as always giving and commoners as only receiving. Friends help each other, without thinking about status, and that help goes both ways. Quite so. And when I require the aid of a friend, I assure you I will happily recognize it. But only with friends. 
In the main, I must continue to refuse assistance from the common folk. For a noble to accept would be disgraceful. <laughs> huh. I always thought he was just stuck up. Turns out, he just has this grand idea of nobility he's trying to live up to. Oh no! I didn't even give him the handkerchief! It's only a scratch, Leone. I'm all right. One mistake like that in battle and you're done. This is your weapon hand, isn't it? Let me stop the blood. Apologies for the trouble. No trouble. And no apologies. Thanks is what you say when a friend helps you out. <sighs> Darn. What's wrong? I need a bandage to stop the bleeding, but this is all I've got. My handkerchief. I was only carrying it around to give back to you anyway. Mind if I use it for this? Very well. I suppose that's fitting in a way. <laughs> I guess so. Not that I'm happy you're bleeding. I'm glad you'll accept it, though. In the past, you might have refused it. Yes. I might have made it an issue of commoners giving aid to the nobility or some such. I didn't understand why you were so strict about it, but I think I kind of get it now. You know, if every noble were like you, the world would be a better place. Perhaps, but you were right. Many great deeds are accomplished by friends working together, especially when those friends are as capable as you. Me? I hope this is not the first time I have told you this, Leone, but you are an exceptional individual. By insisting on matters of status and dealing with you, I have done you a terrible disservice. For that, Please accept my apology. Let us promise to look out for one another as friends from now on. No need for vows. That's how I've always seen it. You weren't wrong about nobles and commoners each having their own roles. But the important thing is we help each other. That is precisely what being friends with you has helped me to understand. In fact, I've begun somewhat to think of you as rather something more. Huh? Sorry, what did you say? I said... I hope we'll always give each other support. <laughs> oh, Lawrence, do you have a moment to spare, my dear? Hello, Professor Manuela. I trust all is well with you. I am quite well, quite well, thank you for asking. You are always such a gentleman. Thank you for saying so. How may I be of service? I was wondering if we might spend a little time together. Maybe chat a bit? Certainly. It is an honor to speak with someone as elegant as yourself. I've just made tea. Would you like a cup? Oh, that would be just lovely. Lawrence, I hope you won't think it too forward of me, but I was wondering if you could explain a poem to me. It goes like this. Verdant rain soothe my aching heart like a cherished friend. Amid time's flow I mourn, bonds I'm not sure I can ever rend. As my mind clings to desperate thoughts, here it comes, horse bow moon and summer's end. Oh, that's, um, that's my poem. As I suspected, I've checked absolutely everyone's handwriting. It's a sad poem, though, isn't it? Feels lonely, possibly even, dare I say, defeated. What makes you feel that way, Lawrence? Why aren't you happy? I very much want to know. Well, I suppose I... Wait, why are you reading my poetry? Where did you even get that? I found it, and when I saw the words, I read them. Well, that's what people do when they see words. They read them. Kindly return that at once. Reading someone else's work without permission. What an egregious breach of etiquette. Uh, honestly. Oh, dear. Snatching at something someone else is holding. How violent. It's not like you to lose your composure, Lawrence. Please, just forget you ever saw it. I beg you. I'm afraid I could never forget that peek into the darkness of your soul. Nor would I want to. Then, at the very least, would you kindly promise not to mention it to anyone else? 
Don't feel embarrassed. No. Be proud. It's a lovely piece of writing. Quite revealing. I'd never guess you'd have such hidden depths. Tell me more. That's quite enough. Oh, that's absolutely adorable. So bashful. I simply must hear more of his poetry sometime soon. Is that Professor Manuela? Her voice is every bit as fine as you might expect from the former leader of the Middle Franc troupe. Oh, if it weren't for her drinking and her woefully inadequate manners, she would fit right in with high society. Wait a minute. As my mind clings to desperate thoughts, here it comes, horse, bow, moon, and summer's end. That's my... Oh, no. No, no, no! Oh, Lawrence! I heard you shout. Are you okay? The poem! My poem! Forget it, I said! I asked you for one thing! And I told you it would be impossible for me to forget. Certainly, I understand. But setting it to music, and now singing it? Oh, yes. It makes for a beautiful song, doesn't it? I'm feeling so lonely and blue. My dearest has left. He has gone far away. And I'm here, all alone. And in my sadness, your poem. Well, it became a song for me to sing. It brought me a moment of happiness. I do not know who spurned you, but I assure you my poem has nothing to do with any such feelings. <sighs> it is getting late. We should both turn in. I will take my leave now. Oh, I understand. You're leaving me too. Why? Am I too old to matter? No, I never said any such thing. Why, I am sure there are plenty of men who would prefer a mature woman such as yourself. Mature, he says. I knew it. You're all the same, you know. No one sees the person behind the voice. They just see me older today than yesterday. They say, oh, look what happened to her. Nobody sees my frustration, my resignation to be forever alone. But you do. It's all right there in your poem. Please, I assure you, my poem was not about that at all. It was actually about the ideal of nobility. The sentiment is that someday I know I will get what I want. There is no resignation in it, as you seem to be suggesting. Lawrence. I was sure the poem was more about someone lamenting their frailty and the loneliness of time's passing. But that's not it at all, is it? This is the story of someone impatient to get ahead, who is afraid they'll never make it. The speaker in the poem does lament his shortcomings. The road to reach his ideal is long. It is a trial, a test. If he can just find his way through it, he knows he can move forward. So I think you should try to move forward too. Because with a voice as talented as yours, how could you possibly fail? Lawrence, Someday, you should let me sing this song in public. I think people who are battling through their own trials, they might find comfort in this. And I believe I'm the only one who can do your work justice. <sighs> Very well. You have my assent. On the condition that you do not attach my name to it. Now, permit me to retire for the night. I require ample rest to maintain an adequate level of polish, you know. I suppose... If my poem must be set to music, then it had best be done by such a talented singer. As my mind clings to desperate thoughts, here it comes, horse, bow, moon, and summer's end. Did you hear me just now? What did you think? Marvelous, as though sung by the goddess herself. Enchanting, heart-rending, your voice truly captivates all who hear. 
It is as though you channel all the emotion and human experience of your life into the music. Well, I guess I have my fair share of life experience. So long as you're not implying I'm old. Uh, no, that is not... I mean to say that you skillfully applied your own interpretation in the music. Interpretation? <laughs> when I sing, I am not interpreting. I'm scarcely thinking at all. I simply yield my heart to the poetry, and the emotion follows naturally. I believe that is what they call genius. I hope you will permit me to listen again. I would like to hear it up close next time. Of course. Next time I'll perform a private show. Just the two of us. You mock me. <laughs> Never. I wasn't mocking you. In fact, I'd like to see some more of your poetry. My poetry? Why? I'd like to use it for another song. I promise that when it's done, you'll be the first to hear. Please, my poetry is merely an idle pursuit. That doesn't matter. The words are unadorned, the feelings so direct. Your poems have touched my heart. They are so true to life. I suppose there is a certain appeal in the portrayal of such dark emotions, even if it is a bit graceless. Very well. Take this. You may use any of the poems I've finished working on. Oh my. I can hardly wait. Is this the next part of the poem I was singing just now? Yes. I wrote that after I heard you sing the first part. I had nearly given up on it, to be honest. But your music gave me the inspiration to continue. Though it is still quite unpolished, and not at all ready for a broader readership, I feel. Unpolished? No, Lawrence. It's beautiful. Thank you. To think that my voice inspired you, yet it's you who inspires my voice. I'm so excited to start a new song. Yes, please do. Hello, Catherine. A moment of your time. Oh, it's you. Yes? That sword you wear upon your hip, how did you come by it, exactly? I don't appreciate your tone. Are you implying I swiped it off someone? Not at all, but heroes' relics are typically passed down through the bloodlines of the Ten Elites. You are descended from a noble family, are you not? That's none of your business. Actually... Let's say I was a nobody, with no relic, no crest. I would still be me, wouldn't I? That's not to say lineage counts for nothing. It just doesn't count as much as how you lived your life and what you live for. Or, let's say I was descended from some noble house. Would that change how you treat me? Yes, it would. To treat you differently from the common folk would only be appropriate. You're so narrow-minded, tied down by foolish, antiquated notions. But the nobility and the common folk are different. If the few did not have capabilities to set them apart from the many, then they would not be the few. Wow. You really think nobles are better than everyone else, don't you? I didn't mean to suggest... You pay so much attention to people's lineage and status that you have no idea who they actually are. Even if I was from the prestigious house whatever, I would never associate with a blowhard like you. Your swordplay is captivating, exceedingly graceful, yet mindful to guard the weaknesses that often accompany such elegant flourishes. Lawrence, are you spying on me? That's not very noble. It was rude of me to watch so long in silence, I do confess. Yet I could not bring myself to interrupt. I believe that such a deep grasp of swordplay can only mean that you have experienced the privilege of a noble birth. You just don't let up. I didn't inherit my sword skills, Lawrence. I trained. I earned them. One's lineage does not affect one's talent or tenacity, to be sure. But a noble is raised in an environment more conducive to the honing of martial skill. 
Those brought up in the lap of luxury are blessed with a far wider variety of options for their futures. And a noble raised in that fashion is better equipped to keep the peace for the common folk. Sure. And besides keeping the peace, what are the nobility's other duties? Matters of state for a start. A noble has the ability to declare war, for instance. A commoner does not. And a noble who carries the blessing of a crest has even more power. One move from such an individual can exert massive influence. Of course, such influence must only be wielded with discretion. It is a noble's duty to use power wisely. Whether or not it's their duty, if they don't use their power wisely, the people will revolt. Hmm. Indeed, the motivation to revolt can only come from discontent with the nobility. But if the people are well protected and enjoy peaceful and happy lives, there is no such motive. Thus, if such a revolt does occur, the nobility must be held accountable. The nobility must be held accountable, hmm? I never thought I'd find myself agreeing with you. Maybe you're not as bad as I thought. In fact, I'll let you in on a secret. I am from a noble family, House Karen of Fargus. I used to be known as Cassandra Rubens Karen. Perhaps you've heard that name before? House Karen? It cannot be! Are you the one who was driven from Fargus for some grave crime? So people say. However, I didn't do anything wrong. Anyway, how do you rate me now? On one hand, I am a noble, but I'm also a fugitive. I see. Well then, will you do me the honor of a bout? <laughs> so you'd like to suss me out with your sword? Sure, I'll take you on. Let's put the match on hold for now, Lawrence. Or if you can't wait, we'll say you won. No. Let us resume it later. You haven't yet had the chance to use Thunderbrand. You weren't using a relic either. If you had been, you would have won easily. Even without it, you're stronger than I expected. You seem to be fighting more intensely than usual. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd have surely lost. But I had a vested interest in testing your character. If your swordplay relied at all on the dirty tricks of a fugitive, I would have felt compelled to defeat you. Are you saying you fought more ably because you had a sense of purpose? Not as such, although I admit that when we crossed blades, I became envious of your strength. I caught a glimpse, in your elegant swordsmanship, of an aspect of the noble ideal that I yet lack. That envy is, perhaps, what drove me to fight so hard. Interesting. I was also able to satisfy my curiosity. You are no criminal, but rather a lady of great conviction. That might be an exaggeration. I've done some things I'm not proud of. Modest as ever. Another of your noble qualities. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm no longer a noble. Whatever your title, the responsible use of power is the very hallmark of nobility. Deny it all you like, but the way I see it, you are indeed a true noble. I don't want to be a true noble. I won't be tied down by any stuffy idea of nobility. Although, if this is your way of flirting with me, perhaps I can be persuaded otherwise. That's rather sudden. Tell me, Lawrence, do you often woo noble women? As a true noble, I must be an ideal target for a fellow like you. Since you put it that way, I... Uh... Apologies, but I confess you've rendered me quite speechless. Lighten up. I'm just teasing. You're clearly not ready to woo me. Not ready? Do I not suffice for you? Is there some flaw that I could conceivably correct? You're more open-minded than you used to be, but you're still so hung up on status and lineage. If you became a more tolerant person, maybe it would work out. What matters isn't someone's blood. It's what they want, what they fear what they accomplish. When you understand that, let me know, and I might just fall for you. Just wait and you shall see, Catherine. I fully intend to live up to the very highest of your standards. <laughs>